Hi, I'm Morris Rosenthal from Funner Books, recording in the FreeCam Studio software. That's my plug for them. Um, today we're going to continue on with our graphing. And what I'm going to do is start labeling the axes of this graph. Now, you have to be a little bit thoughtful about how you want to do your graphing as to what data is going to end up on the axes and what data is going to end up on the lines. Since our made-up data here that I'm using from my article, phonerbooks.com graphing.htm, um, is already set, and I have the table here that I'm going to use that I created this data, I think what we're going to do is we'll put the quarters on the bottom of the graph down here. And on the left-hand side of the graph, we'll just have the sales levels, and it's going to be in quarters, in hundreds of books per quarter. So we'll start off by create by getting opening up the text tool and creating the numbers that we're going to need. And we'll see how the font is set for this right now. That's not bad. I must have used that before. So I'm going to go 0 space 100 space 200 space 300. You get the point. And all I'm doing is I'm creating these number sets and I'm just going to move them down by cut by cut and paste. I could fool around with uh, having typed them, oops, that's two 900s in a row, having typed them so they would come out vertical. I'm not quite sure how many numbers I need here, but it's not 1100, 1100. But I'm very comfortable with using cut and paste, and I'm very lazy about doing anything else that I don't have to do. 1500, I don't know, 1400 might do it. Oops. So there we go. Here's our numbers for the axes. And all I'm going to do is pick them up with cut and paste and drag them down there. So 0, of course, goes in the 0 position. We'll come back and get 100. It's going to be the next guy up. And you can see that, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm not being super critical about where the placement is. You can always go back and move these things. And of course, like anything else, you get better at it as you go along to the point where you say, gee, that came out much nicer than I thought it might have. But uh, it's, it's really not critical. And if you have a real hard time with it, you can try typing them in a, in a column format instead. So you allow that paint will sort of get them lined up. Um, and otherwise, you can go back and move them as many times as you want to. 600. I imagine this is about as interesting as watching paint dry. But in actually doing it, it's appreciably more interesting than watching paint dry. Now, if you're talking about watching plaster dry, that might be another issue because plaster has some interesting drying characteristics. Particularly if there's a guy cursing at his ill luck and having chosen to plaster a place to start with. Let's see, we're getting there. 1100. And 1200. So I have far more numbers than I need. Let me quick look at my data over on the left and see if I got up over 1200 anywhere. Uh, 1116, 1243. Oops. So it turns out my graph isn't quite large enough. Well, that's easy enough to do. We're not going to need the 1400. Let's just move this 1200 up and out of the way a bit. And we'll extend our graph a little by coming in here and going Edit Copy, Edit Paste. And then we'll just set this down in here. Do, do, do. I don't think I have transparency turned on. I'll just do it by eye. Yeah. See, opacity draw opaque was checked, so I couldn't see what was underneath, but a little alignment by eye now and then doesn't hurt anything. And like anything else, you can always move stuff around after the fact and use undo. That time I took too much white space with the 1300. So there's our data. And in order to put a label in here, which is going to be book sales, I'm just going to do it over here on the side and move it after the fact. And I'm going to do it with the text tool, of course, because that's how you do text. 
And I'm going to use capital letters because capital letters just translate better into a vertical. So book sales. Let's see if that looks at all horrible. The L could come over a little. It's, oops, still on the text tool. You know, there are letters that center well, and there are letters that don't center so well. I like that a little better, and the K looks a little funny because it's very strong on the left. But the other ones are okay. And we'll just pick up this whole thing now, book sales, and drag it over here. Put it down somewhere. That yeah, looks about even, huh? Oh, I might be overwriting something there. There we go, book sales. Now for the bottom axis, it's, it's always easier working in the horizontal. We're going to be doing quarters. And I think I'll do it in two layers. So what we'll need is, we'll see how much room they're going to take up first. Ooh, takes up quite a bit. So another way to do this would be one, two, three, Four. Uh, that's fading a little more than I'd like. Let's see if four, one, two, and that one's over a bit, two, three, four, go back and we'll move that, one, two, three, four, one. Now you might look at that and say, well, how the heck is that going to help people know what, oops, let me get back to our cut tool here. How is that going to help people know what, what they're looking at? Well, we'll add a little more labeling beneath it. Now this one I think should be over a bit. And this one should be over a bit. Okay, three, four, maybe a bit. See, none of this has to be exact. And paint is pretty nice about keeping things in the same sort of plane for you because it's a, it's a very crude drawing program. So when you move things off by one width, it tends to be obvious. So there are quarters. And now we'll put in our years. So we'll have... Where did we start? 2006. Well, Get it under there, 2006, 2007, 2008. We don't really need 2009, but maybe I'll, hmm, maybe I didn't leave enough room. So I think I'll leave it just like that. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't know whether or not we should also label it with quarters. Not going to worry about it at this point. Eh, that four could come over a little. Oh, do So you see, I make this same mistake quite a bit, which is forgetting which tool I'm using. So now we have a graph prepared with axes. And I'm going to stop and save it, because if you don't stop and save things frequently, and I'll call this one second, you can end up regretting it <laughs> greatly. So I'm Morris Rosenthal for Phoner Books, and in our next step, we're going to actually put the data on the graph.